welcome back to our let's play of Attila Total War, the Roman Civil War mod. So, last time we played, we wiped out the foolish, weak, Western Roman Emperor. And we also conquered much of Spain, a lot of Spain actually. And now, we are going to, I think we're going to consolidate what we own here. That's probably for the best. And uh, we're going to build up North Africa a little bit into the glorious state that it should be. I mean, look at this. We, we own most of North Africa. And we also have to deal with the last Roman loyalists camping out over here. Once and for all. Uh, so that is where we're sending Bonifactus. He will be arriving in Tarentum and then sailing across the strait to deal with them. But yeah, it's been a while since I've played Until Total War. I've been uh, not playing it so that I'd actually feel like playing it when I recorded it. You know, that whole thing. But yeah. Let's do it to, to it. The White Huns. How dare they? How dare they? So, the Eastern Roman Empire doesn't like us, and we're at odds with Stileco. I guess that's how you pronounce it. We're at odds with his Roman Empire, with his Roman state, based in Central Italy. Look at all these other kingdoms, wow. Lachmede Separatus. <laughs> beautiful, 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 beautiful. So, let's go up here. We'll march across. Look at this. Beautiful. So, we have some new tech to research. We can do a library. Battle movement speed, I like that. Payment in kind, integrity goes up. Let's do that. Let's do integrity. I mean, my integrity is as high as it's going to get. Or my armies. All two of them. Or all three of them. I have a third one right here. So. Get some African Legios. Let's see. I think Carthage is pretty upgraded. Here we go. This is where the upgrades need to be. Right here. Right here, dude. Alright, let's see. Capital. I need marble. I don't have that. A rally field. A forum. I can do a forum. I mean, these guys are definitely not on the front lines. So, forum it is. We can also upgrade the city to a municipium. And let's see about over here. Left this magna. Uh, can't be upgraded for a little while. It's got an aqueduct. That. All fancy. It's all fancy. Let's look at our relations here. Ooh, I can do. Master Foot. There he is. So what do we got? Carthago, Affluent, I own 19 regions, 5 provinces, pretty good. Let's look at our diplomatic stuff. The Eastern Roman Separatists do not like us at all. Um, the Garmatians like us, apparently. Welcome, friend. Welcome. They're our puppet state and we have military access with them, but they like us. Oh, they're de deteriorating with us. They don't, they don't like us. Let's give them a little bit of money. No. Hell with you, then. Done with you. Linguria. Ooh, they on a pretty good swath, swathe of Gaul. 
Lusitania doesn't like us. We pieced them out. Macedonia doesn't like us. Look at that guy. Look at his hair. Let's see. Who else we got? The Mauritians or our puppets. Palma? Romans. Stelcho's Rome. Oh, Stelcho's dead. It's up. It's now Bonifactus Nasius Varro is in charge. Hmm. Strength ranking four. My strength ranking is two. I wonder what factors into that. The Visigoths are still alive. Uh, these guys are pretty strong. They're probably the strongest power in Spain. Hmm. Hmm. He's got two very large armies here. That's why I'm, that's why I'm hesitant to uh, move. I'm hesitant to invade. Um, Stolcho immediately. Yes, upgrade you. Sure, your governor. The governor of Carthage. I reckon quite a bit of money, too. The Franks, the Saxons, Danes, Geats, Jutes, all these lovely, lovely nations. So I think this is one of the few Attila videos that has gone, like, in the long run. Like, I've made a lot of them. <laughs> Besides maybe, like, the Geats campaign I did when this game came out. I've also been noticing more and more at, with each successive uh, Total War game that mods for these games, like good like overhaul mods, are harder and harder to find. Like the only, like back in Medieval 2, I could tell we you like, with honor. sure, I could tell you like at least 10 really good Medieval 2 mods. Like at least 10. For Attila, I can think of maybe two. Like, maybe two. Awesome. And the ones I'm thinking of are the, uh, the, one of them's not a complete overhaul mod. It just changes the factions and it makes the game a bit more difficult to play. I forget what it's called. It's like, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, if I remember it, I'll, I'll remember it and say it in the next video. But the other one I can remember that I can clearly remember is Age of Vikings, which is the Charlemagne uh, DLC, is a Charlemagne DLC mod. And Age of Vikings is really cool because it changes the game and the factions and adds a whole bunch of new figures and new places that you can invade and fight and events and all that cool stuff. So that's really cool. Uh, let's do a... Sure, auditorium, I guess. But that's one I want to. I want to play Age of Vikings. And play as one of uh, Ragnar's sons. I think that'll be fun. Municipum. Um, I think that'll be a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Play as like Beer and Ironside. Or play as um, Half Dan White Shirt. I think that'd be fun. Or uh, I can't remember the other guy's name. At your command. Let them cower like cattle dogs. Oh, cool. We can actually go to war. If we really wanted, we could go to war with Macedon. And we could go to war with, uh... Where the Visigoths claim all of Macedonia. I think that would probably be... Might be worth it. But yeah. But for Medieval 2, the mods that were really good were like... Broken Steel was a lot of fun, changed the game. Uh, Broken Crescent was a lot of fun. Um, what were some of the other ones? The other one was like the English Civil War mod for Medieval 2. Uh, like the, what was it, the the Lord of the Rings mod for Medieval 2 is really good. You know, there's even an Elder Scrolls mod, I believe, for Medieval 2. Like, the, these mods were some of the, there's even a Warhammer fantasy uh, mod I believe it's either for that or for Rome the original Rome I can't remember which one it is 
But like, those mods were so good, and the games were so were able to be modded so well and into such depth. Like, Broken Crescent was one of the only games, like Total War games at least, that had like. Um... Oh no. That's fine. We'll just march them down here. Um, but Broken Crescent was one of the only games where public order would go down. You, there was a public order penalty for your king dying. And for, like, other event stuff that would happen. Like, it was one of the only Total War games, like, mods that had that. And that's what made it so much fun. Is the unexpected events. It also had, like, uh... Barbarian invasions would sweep in, much like this game, you know, what is it, ten years later, or however long it is, has. Uh, okay, Ready for battle. At your command. So, I mean, let's see here. Cavalry commander, definitely. And let's do civil duty, light training. Go kill. To victory! For death and honor! Oh, they got a crossbow unit. But yeah, you know, it's just a it's a, it's a shame that are, there aren't good like better mods out there. Like some of these ones are really good. Like this one, this one's pretty good. I like this one. Like gameplay wise, and like it changes and it gives you different units and diversifies the Roman Empire. That's really cool. But I'm talking about like overall like deep story arcing and like like a lot of a lot of the older mods had that you know they even have like uh there was a mod called uh i don't think it was ever f completed but it was called all under heaven and it was going to be uh total war set in the far east so you got to play as japan or china or tibet or i think it was uh was it the Ming Dynasty? I think it was the Song. The Song Dynasty. Uh, and it took place just before the Mongols invaded China. Like, stuff like that. Like, you don't get those... You don't get too many of those mods. I mean, probably one of the better ones, even though it's not out yet, for Rome 2, is a uh, Bronze Age mod. Changes a whole lot with the game. You know, adds completely new factions and new units and new stuff back to an age that Total War's never touched. That type of cool stuff. That's just a shame. Oh, what is it called? It's called Pardis or Orientis or some shit. I can't remember what it's called. It's for this one, for this game. It changes. That mod I was really impressed with because it changes. Um, it changes how the what is it the the government system works. You know the edict system. That's what it is. The edicts. It changes the edicts to where there's bonuses and negatives. Like, there are pros and cons to choosing certain edicts. Which I thought was really cool. It kind of tailors the game differently and how you should look at it. You know, not everything, when you do an edict in real life, not everything's going to be positive. And that's kind of what the mod changes. It also changes the Roman Empires. Um, uh, the Eastern Roman Empire is like Imperium Roman something Orientis. And this the Western Roman Empire is something Occidentus. Um, it gives them their Latin names, which I find very cool. So, that's what's cool. Do, 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 do. Chase those bitches down, dude. Kill. You're dead. Expand the influence of Rome. Especially as us, the legitimate successors of the Empire. So what are these? Oh, they're ruined buildings. <laughs> okay. Let's do battle movement speed, I guess. I think we should get ready to go to war with the Visigoths. These guys too. Start reclaiming land around Italy for the prepare for the invasion of Italy. 
Just gonna try and sail away. No, you don't, dude. We're killing you. Them Kill them. Good work, man. Roman loyalists are all gone. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, cool. But yeah, it also changed the Allens. Uh, the mod I was talking about before it changed the Allens to a um, was it a nomad group? And that kind of stuff. It changes the way the Huns work. I think I think that's really cool. I like I like innovative mods like that. Um, but I, like, like, I never played enough of the, what's it called, the, um, last Roman campaign to think it anything, like, special when it comes to, like, expansion campaigns. Like, I thought it was good, don't get me wrong, but I don't think, I, I didn't think that the last Roman was, like, special. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't anything, like, I have a lot of I don't have a lot of husbandry buildings here, so I guess we do a quarry. Or not. Toolmaker. Weaponsmith. A toolmaker. Um Yeah, but there wasn't like it wasn't like amazing or anything like that. Like I thought it was good and I like the concept of like a story driven uh campaign. That's a lot that's really cool. I like that and you make certain decisions. And it affects how um, the emperor perceives you, and how you you get more, you either get more or less uh, help. I think that was really cool. But I just, I, the Charlemagne DLC, I just don't see enough to buy it. You know, I'm tired of of Total War twenty thousand DLCs. You know, that change that either don't change any of the factions when they come out. Or there's just not a big enough, like, like there's not enough there for me to, to like, own. You know what I mean? Like, before the Charlemagne DLC came out, I'm pretty sure, I'm almost certain that there was a Charlemagne mod coming out for this game. I'm almost certain there was. That probably would have added far more than the Charlemagne DLC. Now, people have used the Charlemagne DLC to build better mods off of. You know, Age of Vikings is based around the Charlemagne DLC. You know, it's based after it, you know. So I think that's really cool. You know, that's probably one of the better mods I've seen because it changes stuff and... But... I don't know. It's just, it's sad, especially when you... Or disappointing. Not really sad, it's disappointing. Especially when you come from, like the era of Rome 1, where Rome 1 had really good mods and, like, fun online gameplay and, like, all that stuff. I've also been playing recently. I've been playing Napoleon Total War. And if you guys think Napoleon Total War is dead, it is not, and it is so much fun. It really, after playing uh, Sword and Shield games like this and uh, some other ones, it's kind of refreshing to go into the age of, like, the early Victorian era, you know, the, age, the Napoleonic era, and fight like they did. The big line battles and cannons and, you know, artillery and uh, horse charges, you know, the cavalry charges and all, the, all that fun shit. So, if you guys have Napoleon installed, go play online. It's a lot of fun. Don't worry about the, uh, the star rating system, like the general system. I think it's really dumb, because um, I've played like five star dudes and still beat them. And I'm a one star general. It's just that, you know, I don't play ranked, because there's no point in my opinion to play ranked. I mean, unless you are a ranked player. You know, I've been playing Total War since, what, what was <laughs> Rome, you know, Rome 1. Medieval 2, I think, was my first Total War that I had bought and played successfully. So, yeah. 
I've played enough of these games to know that most basic tactics work pretty damn fast. What are you loot? You looting me, bitch? Are you looting me? You fuckhead? Fucking looting me, dude? I'm being raided? Being fucking raided, dude? Dude. I still have another four turns before I can murder the shit out of him. We hunger for battle. Although a game that has not let me down in expectations as of recently is uh, EU4, which is a paradox game, Europe Universal Alice 4, and Crusader Kings 2. And both, you know, long after you've done, you know, the basic shit that you do in any of these uh, strategy games, you eventually get to a point where you just uh, snowball out of power, you know, you snowball. You get so powerful that you become unstoppable, and you just plow through everything in your way, like all uh, nations. But EU4 is uh, custom, or yeah, it's custom creator nation mods, or not just custom nations. You can make custom nation in that game. If you get a mod, you can unlock the the points, so you can make a big, powerful, scary nation and kind of develop your own story around it, which I think is really cool. Um, so I've been playing that. That's a lot of fun. And Crusader Kings 2, because of the mods it has, you know, Crusader Kings 2 has, it has a, a really good Elder Scrolls mod called Elder Kings. You know, it has a very good, um, uh, was it, Warhammer mod, which is Grimminge Knocked or something like that. Uh, I did a Let's Play of it. A lot of fun, very in-depth, you know. Um, it's got an Avatar mod, Avatar The Last Airbender mod which I did a let's play of. That game's fun as fuck too. You know, it adds so much to this new world and it runs really well and it's very polished and pretty, you know, with very little bugs. Um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of cool mods out there. Mods really keep the games alive long after they've like, long after they've like worn out. You know what I mean? Like there are a lot of games that like, wear out people stop playing them and mods really keep them alive so in conclusion to that rant and ramble uh, mods are fun and if you have a game you think has mods you should go download some of them because they're a lot of fun and they're very awesome all most of the time they're really good mm. I should march on these guys Who are you allied with? No one? War then. Let them see come to fight me. They'll be I'll laugh. It shall be laughable. Is this part of Macedonia? It is. Cool. Cool, dude. Hmm. Sure. We need to build uh, waterworks here anyway. There we go. Look at all the money I got. Fucking unlimited money. Ooh. Imperial transport service. Oh, it's right there. What do I need? Oh, I need traditions of strategy to unlock it. Dude, then I get an auxiliary count pound. What? I get some cool shit. Dude. Dude. What is this? Elite privileges? Latin Cathedral. My Latin. Taxes and kind. Fur market. Olive oil mill. What? There's some cool shit. What year is it? It's only 402. I wonder how things are going in Gaul. I wonder how Gaul is doing. Gaul. 
So I think we build an army in Cordoda. And then we can march to take over this region of Spain. Like I think these guys are gonna be challenging. But I don't think I don't think Nova Carthago is only this one province. It should be quite easy to take. If I just move my army down here, it doesn't seem like they have a lot of uh they don't have a big army. So I should be able to seize their city pretty easily. At least that's the hope, right? So I think we're going to go down here. Oh, I got, no, I got an okay army. They heard me talking about them, so they're going to build a bigger one. Celtica has been destroyed. What a shame. Let's go down here. These guys need... We don't need any more. We don't need any more food. We have so much food. My empire has so much food, it's ridiculous. It's almost really dumb how much food we have. Alright, invade. Hi. You guys are all really weak. Eastern Roman Imperials. So we're gonna kill all of you. You're dead. Well then. Oh no, I lost a legion. Damn. Impressive. They put up a fight. Let me take that shit, yo. At your command. Yo, thanks for Corinthus. I really appreciate that. That was nice of you guys holding down the fort for me. Thanks. I like it. I like what you're doing here, dude. Look at that. Now I own Greece. Look at all the shit I own, dude. I'm big, scary, and powerful. <laughs> so, too, too spooky for me. Alright. So, I think, just to keep this video short, yeah. So, I'm gonna end this part for now thank you guys so much for watching uh if you enjoyed this video please don't hesitate to like comment subscribe it means a lot to me i appreciate it quite a bit when we return uh, i think we're gonna finish up the greeks and i think we're gonna make war on the goths to you know ever expand our influence and then from there who knows probably be conquering spain Spain's still a big priority. That's a lot of land and manpower to be giving up. But thank you guys again for watching. Until next time, stay tuned.